time to answer the top questions that you all sent in over the summer. We're going to break the rules and try to answer five questions in under five minutes. Ooh. Can Ooh. we do it? <laughs> Hurry up. Audience, <laughs> ready? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> First up, it's an email from Kelly in Salt Lake City, and she writes, Dear Dr. Travis, I've been worried about my kids all summer because I heard about a deadly bacteria that some people have contracted while swimming. What is it, and how can I protect my family? Kelly, I'm glad you asked this. You're actually talking about an amoeba that has made headlines over the summer. Have a look. A deadly brain infection killed nine-year-old Christian Strickland. A week after going to a fishing camp near his Richmond, Virginia home, he complained of a headache. It was the same story in Florida, where 16-year-old Courtney Nash went swimming in a river and died a week later. The killer is a microscopic amoeba living in freshwater lakes, rivers, and hot springs. This amoeba essentially goes up the nose and then causes a severe brain infection. So the answer, a lot of it was contained in that video. Here's the key. This is very scary. But on average, three people a year die from this. It is extremely and exceedingly rare. I read about it in medical school. I've never seen a case of it. I never expect to see a case of it. But for some reason, in these bizarre circumstances, they get into your brain and they cause meningoencephalitis, can lead to rapid death. But again, very, very rare. Our next question is one we received via Twitter for Dr. Lisa. At Modern Mom 01 tweets, my 16-year-old daughter is starting her junior year in high school. She has not gotten her period yet. When should I start worrying? Well, you know, periods are a vital sign for all women, and especially when it's going to start. But there are things that precede it that herald, like, when it should start, and that's breast budding, um, a, a hair down there, hair under the arms, and also a growth spurt. If it doesn't start after these things have started their progression, there may be an ab abnormality in either hormones or something going on in the ovaries, and it does need to be checked out. So ask your pediatrician or your gynecologist. And our next question is from Mary in Seattle, who wrote us on Facebook. And this one's for Dr. Sears. She writes, I hate to admit it, but my kids ate badly all summer because we were on vacation, and I let them do their own thing. Now that school's starting, how do I transition them back into healthy eating habits at school? Oh, this is really important. First off, talk to your kids. Tell them, you know, that you kind of blew it during the summer, and we're going to make some better changes so that they can be get better grades, uh, do better in sports, have prettier hair, and uh, feel better, too. So. Take them shopping. That's probably the number one thing you can do with your kids uh, to help them get on the same game plan as you, is have them involved. And when you're at the store, have a little game. The shopping list is going to be all healthy foods, and you can tell them you can pick out anything you want as long as, long as it doesn't have one of three, these three words, hydrogenated, high fructose corn syrup, or artificial dyes, colors with numbers behind them. So, you know, that's the only rule you need to follow, and you can make it a great game. We also got an email that we usually wouldn't answer, but now that we have our own doctor of psychology, Dr. Wendy, it's great because mental and physical health go hand in hand. So are you ready? Yep. Stacy in Dallas writes to us, my 16-year-old daughter got a new boyfriend this summer that I don't care for. Should I butt in and try to end it or let it run its course? Well, I can tell you the number one way to make them fall deeply in love mm -hmm. is for you to criticize the boyfriend, okay? Because <laughs> she's not listening to mom at this point. I would say befriend the boyfriend, invite him over to family dinner a lot, maybe call up his parents and do something the two families together. You see how quickly she'll see him for what he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. Thank you, Dr. Winnie. And we did say the best for the last. <laughs> Dr. Orden, this one's for you. Take a look. All right. I heard that caffeine is supposed to be really good for your skin and help prevent skin cancer. Is that true? Well, we've talked about it a lot. With, with coffee, you're talking about caffeine, one of the constituents in it. We know that it's an antioxidant. What does that do? Well, oxidation, think of it as rusting. Mm -hmm. Rusting in your body can lead to two things, aging and potentially cancer. So anything that's an antioxidant may help those two things. So. What we may see in the near future is the addition of caffeine to sunscreen because it may help protect those cells from oxidation, free radicals, and potentially skin cancers. Wow.